it felt threatening. What the bloody hell was that? Massacre, suicide and 60 ghosts await the most haunted crew at the Schooner Hotel. Welcome to Most Haunted. This week we brought you to the Northumberland coastline, to a place that's had 3,000 ghost sightings since 1998. The Schooner Hotel in Almouth is said to be haunted by 60 ghosts. The Schooner Hotel in Almouth, Northumberland, is a listed 17th century coaching inn. It's been the hub of Almouth Village since the first customer back in the 1600s. The inn sits on the coastline and has been connected with secret tunnels, murder, suicide and smuggling. So many ghosts have been witnessed here, this hotel has become quite famous for its hauntings. Is the Schooner Hotel as paranormally active as the owners and its guests make out? We have 24 hours to find out. The place for hundreds of years was a famous seaport. Um, all sorts of sloops and schooners sailed in and out of this place. The stories of smugglers for 350 years from the 1600s, this place was a coaching inn. All sorts of famous people stopped off, stayed here. There's been reports of murders, suicides, hangings, all sorts of things have gone on here. Once used by smugglers, the hotel cellar used to have a tunnel running all the way to the sea. Now, as you can see, it's blocked off. But mysterious lights have been seen here, along with strange, dark, ghostly figures. Karina and the girl called Emma, who um, works here, were actually going upstairs late at night, about 11 o'clock, to check that the fire doors were closed. When at the, the far end of the corridor, this thing, as I call it, it flew out of room 20 and banged straight into the fire door and the noise was horrendous. However, what it was did not go through the fire door. They thought it was a burglar. They both saw it. But of course, their first impression is, it's real, it's a burglar. Then it started to come padding down the landing towards them and their comments were it was a large black figure. And we just ran. I mean, I don't know, I've never got out of a place so quickly in all my life. We just ran all the way downstairs. We said, there's a guy who's broken into the hotel. You're going to have to come up quickly. And they came around looking for this burglar. Of course, there was nothing there. But both of them saw it. Both of them swear they saw it. And how can two be wrong? I don't think they are. Almost every room here in the hotel has alleged spiritual activity, but room 28 apparently has the most. It's hardly surprising when suicides and a family massacre are supposed to have taken place in this room. People have witnessed strange noises, dark shadows and also temperature changes, but most frightening of all, an evil presence. The worst bedroom, in my opinion, um, is room 28. Um, it's haunted, it's not just haunted by one person, it's actually haunted by several, I believe. And um, you get some people, they won't even stay there. They go up to their room and they won't stay there. They've got a feeling about the room. There's a massacre um, of a family. We don't actually know what happened, but it was part of the living quarters of the, of the staff. And for all we know, um, during the night, perhaps, father um, came back drunk and lost it and we believe that both wife and children were actually massacred upstairs. They still hear screams, they still hear crying of children. This corridor is supposed to be very haunted. Ghostly footsteps are heard when no one's here. Also, the ghost of a maid has been seen on numerous occasions. A murder allegedly was committed in this area. 
but rooms 16 and 17 have an awful lot of paranormal activity. But it's in between those two rooms that are of most interest. We've actually found a blocked off doorway. So what used to be behind the doorway and could it hold the answers to the hauntings of this corridor? I've seen numerous things. I've seen figures at the end of beds and I've seen figures in corridors, shadows, um, just numerous things really. We've got well over 3,000 reported sightings of ghosts within this place. When I say sightings, we were talking of seen it, heard it, smelt it, felt it, sensed it. It's extremely active. It's a very historic place. We've got a plethora of ghosts here just waiting for us. The schooner has 32 rooms, and of those, most of them are supposedly haunted, not forgetting the intertwining corridors. Phil Wyman, our paranormal investigator, spent some time getting to know its ghost stories and the layout of the hotel. But how does Phil feel about the night ahead? Tonight is going to be really interesting. What we've got to remember, we are in supposedly the most haunted hotel in England. They've got massacres, we've got suicides, we've got things that are seen regularly. Um, part of my job tonight, I feel, will be calming the crew down. The one that I'm concerned about is room 20, because room 20 is the room where Karina and Emma actually saw that black figure come out of before it threw itself at the fire door. We've got over 3,500 sightings in this hotel. We try and link as many as we can to factual information, but what we really want to know is who and why and where, and uh, what exactly do they want. During the day, the hotel was very busy, but at night, the hotel became deathly silent, and suddenly, it didn't seem such a friendly place anymore. To help us in our investigation, we asked medium Derek Okora to join the crew for our stay overnight in the Schooner Hotel. Derek needed to walk through the building to see if he could pick up on any spiritual activity. He was drawn to room 28, where the family massacre had taken place. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. OK, Evie. OK, as we approach... Jesus Christ! You OK? Did you feel that? What? Did you the just get some... Move. Did you touch that? No. no I didn't it did. I heard it. It was almost like a clink from there, and then it went like that. Yeah. OK. Well, that's... Did nobody I else see that? I feel that's purely and simply because just at, just at that moment of that second, um, the residual energy changed and was was uh, being blocked from my, my feelings, and then suddenly I'm aware. Now, I do know, and I say it with total respect to us all here, I do know of an individual who comes into this room on a regular basis. He wears like a, a cap thing that's spun round to the side and he has got, um, the only way I can describe is like a ponytail. And um, what happened here, in, in some, the only way I can describe is um, used to knock people out and, and drag them and take them away. And that was, again, to the ships. His words, he belongs with the press gang. The press gang. What the heck's press gang doing here? You know, in this area, plenty of physical blood has been spilt here. Most definitely, murders have occurred here. People's lives. In this it's, particular room? Yeah. And the only way I can put it is, spiritually, I'm going to the lights of the residual energy, and it's one, two, three, if not four souls losing their life. However, that was like a family condition. Who did that? How? how, how? I feel that, oh, this was a coaching house. This was a coaching, coaching house. Uh -huh. I feel these were the times someone who was involved um, with the, that side of looking after this place where horses were kept and what have you, was the one that was just responsible for the links of the deaths um, of this, like, family unit. There's also two males. No, a male and a female, OK? There's been two, two people who have taken their own lives here. Two of them. Is this in this room again, Derek? Oh, can I just go this yeah, way? Sure. 
OK, Phil. Evie. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. Now, the, uh, it's surprisingly enough, <clears throat> the energies and the residual energy that's now um, in this ether, this atmosphere now, is what we could, not a byproduct of, of um, a spirit person, but the movement of spirit people who are actually linked here. Um, and coming along the passageway, and for some reason there is a connection to this bedroom as it is now. Um, maybe the familiarity of what it was, when it was, and that movement along the passageway, and coming in and settling for some reason in this bedroom. Um, I feel there would have been history um, of either the light, something like that, uh, movement, especially noises in this room, uh, has been evident in, even into the modern day now. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel it's definitely been through the movement. OK, I've got to say it this way. Mm. Sam tells me, OK, that there are two individual, two individual spirit people who are housed here and that they are the ones that are mainly active here, mm -hmm. too. But there's been a lot of things happen in this place, a lot of things, but there are two. I feel that one of these two, OK, would be the person who, the only way I can put it, either killed, massacred, whatever way you want to term it, in that other bedroom, those people, and is tormented and stayed in the atmosphere. You know, in the other room where we've just come from, yes. room 28, um, you said that the, there was a massacre in there and two people committed suicide. Yes. And then you felt drawn to come into this room. Yes. Why did you feel drawn to come into this room? Because one of the two, I believe, who committed suicide walked and walks the passageway up to this area. Right. So there's and the... just that constantly. Right. So there's the man who massacred the family and then there's yes. the man or person who kill themselves yes that there's the two spirits so far yes. that are housed here yes whilst we continued walking through the building with Derek strange things seem to be happening to crew members behind the cameras Gwen and I have actually just been keeping out of the way listening and um, as we heard you come out of the room we came back into this room to hide uh, we've just walked past it that light was not on in the bathroom when we came by we've just popped back in here the bloody lights on and I know for a fact it wasn't on when we walked past. I'm sitting on the toilet and I heard footsteps as if, and I'm thinking, I hope that's not the crew coming upstairs to film. Why would they film in my bedroom? No, they can't film in my... The next minute, it's as if a key went in the door. The door opened. I was stood in the bathroom and I heard the light switch off on the wall and I turned around and it was pitch black and there's nobody in there and there's nothing to answer for it but the door was locked and the room was pitch black. So I turned the light on and shot out. Come outside the door and the door's ajar. And I've definitely shut the door because I went to go to the loo. And I'm going, hello? Nothing, no sound. I'm listening, thinking, is, that, is anybody going down the stairs? It was just quiet as a mouse. So I've gone to reception and asked them if the master key's still out. And she said, no, John handed it back earlier. It's, it's behind the desk and you're the only one with the key to room 32. Who would open my door? There was definitely nobody else in the room and the door was locked. I don't know, something's playing uh, silly buggers with it tonight. Debbie, already. It seemed a good idea to switch to night vision earlier than usual. Hopefully this would help us to contact the ghosts of the Schooner Hotel. We all wanted to return to bedroom 28, where the family massacre had taken place. There was certainly an odd feel to this room, and hopefully we would get to know what it was that was making us feel on edge. Since we've been away, um, I most definitely feel, I don't know how everyone's feeling since you've come into the atmosphere, whether you've been sensing anything or what, but I, I feel as if we've had someone back in this room, because my inclinations over here is if, a spirit person has actually been in this area. Oh, so sad because it takes me back in memory of the conditions and the residual energy of this um, group of souls who um, were 
were slain, were, were murdered, the, you know, the life force taken from them. Is there any way of you being able to tell us why they were murdered? Oh, this may sound silly, but it was either import or export, because it all had to do with the ships, and something to do with grain. Mm -hmm. A trader. Yeah. A grain trader. Uh -huh. And he was the head of his family. Thank you, Sam, that's better, thank you. Yes, I don't get his first name. First name, thank you. His first name is William. The money that this trader had was taken, was taken by this culprit. So the person that took the life of these, this family unit was also in, I've just got to classify him as another trader. It's like one it was ready to purchase, but the other one didn't have the goods but made out he did, and when he got the money, he slaughtered them in the sleep. What about...? OK, sorry. Go on. No, it's OK. I just thought I felt something there to the side. What? Here? Yes, just to the back. So I, th I thought earlier I'd got the yeah. impression somebody was looking over my shoulder yeah. earlier. Are you kidding? That's why I looked the... around. Yes, there's an energy there now. I thought it might have been me, but... That's a young lady. That's a young lady. She would be... Is she here? Yes. Just here, but you see about that print, that painting yep. picture yeah, there? Gary, I was it's just going to say then, yes. honestly, I saw a shadow there then knew what Yes, it moved off. Is. Yes, it did. She moved. I saw that shadow move twice then, and that wasn't... None of the crew members have got her shadows aren't going that far yes. over. She started to develop her energy there, and she moved towards that painting that as she yeah. moved over. Um, she's I still here, Derek? Her energy's still depicted there, yes. Um, she's not shown a, a full spiritual... Um, like self, but her energy's there. Um, I would take her to be... Um, Where my hand is? Do, yes, just it, there. Do you see it going into the energy? Yes, the energy's still there. It's not separated. And she's there, and it's... I would say that she would Ooh. be the age of You're maybe right. 12, Hot. 12 or 13. Um, very, very, very... There's a warm spot there, wasn't there? Um, yeah. High cheekbones and very thin in the face. Very pale. There's a hot spot here. Does that sound really silly? Is no, this... we, get we get hot, hot and spots, cold. Yeah. We do get yes, hot spots are um, just as equally as important. Are they? Cold. Oh, yes, there it is. Now, I can feel that with my hands. So she's not... Your yeah, energy's not moved, but she's fine. Does anybody it. want to come and feel this? I can feel that, because there's a hot spot there. It's only ever so it. slightly, but you can... It's there, yes. Yes, you can feel it, yeah, just... Yeah. 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 That's bizarre. You see, generally also, hot spots are not when spirit entities. If, if they're not sour, they're not, uh, you know, nasty, there are souls maybe that have had their lives taken from them, being good souls, and they're not going to depict that chill. Ooh, didn't like that. <laughs> right, what did you feel? Well, just the wardrobe rattle, but it could have been mm. like the floorboards mm. moving or something. This is, you know, this is, there's so many... You see, in this room, in its given time going back... 17 what? Say that again. Thank you, that's better. 1765 to 1768. Yeah. Is that William? Thank you. William. His family perished between that time. OK, I can... He's trying to get his voice through to me this way. Oh, this is good. Come on. Oh, he talks, William talks about Henry. Henry. Someone called Henry. Henry was the one who did the deal. Henry was the one that did the deal and, and did this despicable thing to his family. France. France. OK, thank you. He's from France. France, thank you. Yeah. One of his children, Isabel, Isabella, Isabel, Isabel, Isabel. That was the girl there. OK. I feel a bit lighter, don't you? Do you really? Mm. You know what, what happened to these family? Oh, my God, what do they, pigs. Um, they, um, when they ate and they had um, sustenance of drink, um, there was something placed into their food or their, and made them sleep. Can I just interrupt you, Derek? 
I just saw I saw a, saw a shadow or reflection or something move in that picture behind you. You weren't moving. Yes. And I'm I've sure got to say I've seen something move than that. Earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you know, because he's listening here now, and I feel his family unit are listening as well. If she came here a moment ago, um, they are listening intently here. My the spirit foot, family. My left foot and up to my knee has gone icy, icy cold. Mm. It's like a, yeah, like energies. something like. Like a breeze, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. Well, they, what they're called are spirit psychic breezes. God. And those breezes come in movements of a spirit body uh, walking past you. They don't have to actually touch you. Um, and that causes that sensation, Evie. Should we move out of here? Yes, if that's OK. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. OK. We had all felt that something was in the room with us. How anyone could sleep in that room, I will never know. Onwards and upwards, as we climbed the stairs towards room 20, I couldn't help but remember the story that Karina had told us about the black shape that had leapt out at them. As we reached the top of the stairs, something odd had occurred. What's that? Hey, hang on a minute. Who's put the light on in there? Who's put the light on in there? That light wasn't on before. It was off. Should we open it up? Yeah, the light's on. Is it on now? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get in there. Just check. Mm. I know, I know. Well, you never know. Okay. <laughs> Bathroom lights on. Was not on before. No, no. And suddenly, this is what's been happening in the in the um, hotel all night, hasn't it? Lights yeah. switched on and switched off. Yeah. Turn it and off. as we go, just turn it off. Uh, right. Well, it seems as if they want to. It must like turning lights on and off, Evie. Hmm. See if it comes back on. Yeah. That's the thing. It's kind of like keeping a check on all, knowing which we've got all the lights off. Yeah. And seeing yeah. which ones come on. It did seem odd to find that lights were turning themselves on and doors were opening on their own when we were the only people in the hotel. Another room that we felt compelled to go into was room 16, where the ghost of a soldier has been seen staring at a sleeping occupant. Also, objects move on their own and strange noises have been heard. What can you feel in here? When I walked in, just to that wall there by the clock, mm. but not close to the clock, all I saw was a shadow. The shadow was quite thick. It was just above there, and it was just solid, so to speak, a shadow. No form, no show me, like, you know, facial or anything, just dark between, like, the grey and the black colour. Now, that's very rare for me to experience that sort what of thing. It? What is it? Well, what it is, is it's a spirit individual that is certainly, most definitely not learned, OK, how to um, build up the energy to give, like, a descriptive, you know, mm. for our features, our eyes to see features. Generally, that's a, an individual that has certainly not progressed and could be one of our two individuals, OK, mm -hmm. that we've talked about which we've picked up and linked up with. This, this shadow, when you walked in here and you saw yeah. this shadow on the Quite wide, the wall, actually, which is you... unusual for a, a spirit entity. Mm. I know you it's said you can't unusual. pick out any features face-wise mm. or anything, but mm. are you able to sense whether that was perhaps male or female? It was masculine. It was masculine? Yeah. Um, I, most definitely. A, a female... I, I've never yet, in the time I've been doing my work with spirits, I've never seen a form, so to speak, um, of that nature, and then it to develop into a spirit lady mm. or a, a, a spirit girl. Mm. It's a masculine. Um, when people say that the, the, the Schooner Hotel has 60 ghosts here... No, there's not. Right. If we had 60 active spirit entities in this building, we couldn't fail mm. but to notice things in the atmosphere happening virtually all the time. Mm. Now... 
But we it's have more, two. Too it's many. more feasible to say that there's two active here. Right, come Basically. on. Basically, the mm. others are visitors. Yeah. Can I just point to something out here? This is the second room. Just look at the alarm clock in the corner. Now it's flashing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was in the other room. Which it suggests was, yeah. that that's been reset at some time, and basically two hours ago. That's yeah. the second room that's that been yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm just wondering if the power's been switched off. The other room we were in, it was set actually, it's 2.14. The other room was actually 1.14. Yeah. I'm so just they've gone off at different times. This would be worth looking in other rooms for it. Because that the other mm. room. Yes, it yeah. Just wondering right, if this has got anything to do with like toilet lights going on and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's right, Tom. Observing two hours ago or so, then, wouldn't it? Even the owner of the hotel, Karina, could not understand why the clocks were turning on and off. In many haunting cases, it's known that electrical appliances seem to have lives of their own. No one, even scientists, can give a reason for these strange occurrences. Everyone seemed quite positive about the night ahead, but would all that change as we split up to investigate the ghosts of the Schooner Hotel? For the rest of the investigation at the Schooner Hotel, we had decided to split into smaller groups to cover the building. I wanted to go back up to room 28. This was the room where a family massacre had taken place. With Derek, Phil, Karina and Tom with me, it didn't seem such a daunting prospect. Right, here we are. We're going to go into room 28. There's myself. There is Phil. Tom. Karina, the owner. And, of course, Derek. Right. right. Where's the trigger object? It's just here on the bed. You see it? It doesn't seem as warm as when we were in here last time, does it? No. It seems the temperature it's seems to have dropped a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to have dropped quite a bit, actually, um, from when we were actually sweating when we were in God, here. We were. We were. It's, it's good in some respects when it is a constantly warm temperature because you can tell when we've got a cold spot, mm. uh, which could obviously you know signify paranormal activity, but it does seem to be a lot cooler in here now. Yeah. Oh, it was interesting. When I was in here before, um, I was feeling really weird. And I was thinking I was seeing things, I was seeing flashes of light. Um, but it was that sort of vision that you do get when you're in the dark and you don't know what's going, you know, you, and, you, and it was so hot. Um, but I don't have that at all now. See, now, for me, it's gone quite warm again. It's, it's building up. up. It's almost like it's warming up, but then mm. it could be because, you know, could there be are us. five of us in this room. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if any temperature drops up in here. Oh! Right, oh, what's stop wrong? It. Put the light on. What's wrong? What happened? What's up with that? I just, I just that. went towards the door, yes. and, and the, um, the door rattled and moved. Did it? Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't a, a it wasn't a footstep. It was it was literally like the door was moving. Okay. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. And this is where the um, that hot spot was too, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, just here. Are you were right. Yeah. But just here was where the energy of that young girl was earlier tonight, when she moved from there and out the corner of your eye, you saw a light fill, didn't you? Yeah, I saw... I, I felt um, something there. So that's where, roughly, a vest, if he's just actually experienced that. So this could be her. She's not there to alarm, she's not there to frighten. Um, I just associated it with somebody coming in. It yeah. was almost like it was outside in the hall, like something was coming in. Yeah. Shall we have a sit down then and see what we can find? I would. Yeah. Yeah. Just for yeah. Quiet. Okay. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna sit in this corner. I'm gonna go in here. Where? You sit there. The ladies on the bed, eh? Did you? Come on now. Do you feel that like there's anything in the room, Derek? There's not, um, most certainly not overactivity, that's for certain. I just mean mentally sending thoughts out. 
There's something about this corner, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. Is William here in the room with us? Are there any children here in the room with us? Is there anybody here? What was that? It was like something outside the room, mm -hmm. or in the room. Did it? It was almost like a floorboard being moved. Mm -hmm. To me, it sounded like it was coming from either outside the door or <gasps> very close. Oh, Jesus what did you catch? No, I've not caught anything. Something, I swear to God, just blew on my foot. I swear to okay. God. I swear. That's <laughs> something just blew. <laughs> something blew on my foot. It was the. Now that wasn't a draft. No. I am not kidding you. That was like a kind of. I don't know, I can't explain it. It was a real, you know, on, on your yeah, foot, yeah. quite a sharp, mm. icy cold mm. on my foot. Mm -hmm. When it happens, it's bound to give you a shock because, you know, that, like, brush, whatever they, they intend doing, and whether it gives in a cool or a warm, it's something that's outside your body, so you're going to feel it, it's gonna, you're going to react. What was that? I thought it was you. No, no that was, was that you? No, no, thud? no. What, no. What, what, me? what did you see? Thud. Thud. Phil, do you want to just check outside the yeah, door? I'm just going to have a look, actually. Is there anybody in the corridor? Is there anybody there? We thought someone had been standing behind the door. The floorboards creaking was a sure sign that something was there. If you ever visit the schooner, don't ask to stay in room 28. You might not be on your own. This is one of the darkest places um, I think we've ever been to. Literally, you cannot see your hand in front of your face. And um, we're all falling over and tripping over and doors are banging in our faces. Um, and it's a maze, it's just a warren of, of, of corridors and you don't know where anything is. As usual, other members of the Most Haunted crew were in various parts of the building, trying to communicate with spirits and hopefully encourage paranormal activity. I had decided to join forces with Richard Felix, who, like me, has a fear of the dark. Our first port of call was the cellar. Ghostly lights have been seen here and strange noises have been heard. Blow the candle out. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, doesn't it change? Oh my what God! How black is that? What the hell's that? That was a big rumble. It was a bloody big rumble. But there shouldn't be anybody walking around, should there? I can't believe uh, yeah. how black it is. No. And for everybody at home that's watching, it is imagine just the blackest of black. We haven't got a black torch. And I tell you what, the other thing... I asked you to bring the torch. Listen to me. You do realise how long it would take for us to fumble for a candle and light it, don't you, if anything bloody happens? I asked you to bring the torch. I know. Torch. And I've forgotten. OK. Temperature's dropping. And, um... But then we're not moving around. No, so. we're not. We're not. So I think we need to just sit and wait for it. Mm -hmm. OK. See what happens. I wonder if one of the reasons there's so many such activity, or supposed activity, the fact that the building's all made of stone. Mm -hmm. Even this, even this, even the cellar, um, stone. And there's, you know, there's this theory, of course, of like the stone tapes. Mm -hmm. What was that? No, it bloody was not me. Okay. What the bloody hell was that? For Christ's sake. I think it's above us. I think it is. But. What? I mean, how Right, hold it close to me, cos I'm getting a bit... I'm getting come frightened on, now. Come on, this is, uh, Is there anybody here with us? Anybody from the spirit world that wants to make contact with us tonight? Is there anybody down in this cellar with us now that wants to make contact with us? We're inquisitive. We want to help you. Keep going. That's all it is, we want to help you. Could you give us just a small sign to let us know that you're here with us? 
There may not be enough energy in here for you to appear in front of us. But you could make a rapping noise. No. But you could make a rapping noise. We've got to look and see if there's somebody there. We need to check. Because it was just at the right minute. We've come, come on, we'll be careful. Hello? 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 We couldn't understand it. There was no one around, and as far as we knew, that particular part of the building was deserted. Where the noises came from, we will never know. Richard wanted to go upstairs to the corridor where Karina had seen the dark figure. He wasn't the only one who'd been intrigued by this story. Derek and one of our cameramen, Craig, had beaten us to it, so we decided to stick together. We were in the cellar, mm. and um, that was scary, it wasn't was. it? Was it? It was really yes. scary yeah. in there. Mm. Mm. And I caught a light anomaly in there, but we also heard a lot of noises in there as well. Right. Which could be, we were thinking, is it somebody above us? Yeah. I think the biggest thing that happened to us down there was I was just asking if there was anybody, the usual story, anybody there, would you give us a sign? Could you put. And, and then Bob, almost. Bob, Bob, yeah. Wasn't it? As, as in response. Mm, yeah. Really, but, there, in know, response. Yeah, I can believe because, you know, they do respond. I think we should do a seance. <sighs> Come on. Just a little one. It's a good spot. We've got cameras locked off. You should just do it. Well, we're sitting here and we're collectively um, wanting to send thoughts out to you. If there is an individual here in this atmosphere, especially along the hallway, show yourself, give us a sign or signs that you are coming close. There's a slight creak down there at the bottom. Yes, there is. There is? Yes, it? on the left, yeah. I think I've got a good pair of ears. Yeah. yeah. And I can hear little creaks. Mm. Yeah. Did you just have uh -oh. Yeah, they're shuffling. We all feel of you worthy to do anything absolutely extraordinary. You'd have done it by now. I believe you're cowardly. So come on, show us what you can do. Uh, see? Says. See? That's the response. Show us what you can do. Uh-oh. What? Stand up. Stand up, folks. Why? Oh, Why? Stand up, get ready. Why? Get ready for what? Get ready for what? Get ready for what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's moved it. Right. Are you gutless? Oh, shit. Come on, Richard, you do it. Come We're on. all waiting for you. We expect you to do something, and I want you out of that bedroom. Right? Yeah. And we're yeah. coming for you. But I expect you too gutless to do anything about it. This is the corner here. What's he doing? It's like he's doing that, you know, leaning back. That's exactly how the girls described him. Is it? Yeah, sort of up against the wall. Yeah. And then it flew down at them. Yeah. Was that banging, that first bang that we got, was that the fire door? No. There's no, no, there's no cooling yeah. down of radiators. And there's no Just warming up, cos it's... The, what? That was a noise in the room. Should I've we go in the, the room? Let's go in the room. I've got the key. Okay. Come on. Yep. You're going to be all right. Yeah. Can I, why do I have to go last? Why do I have to go first, you mean? Oh, how cold Isn't is it, it cold? in here? Yeah. It's so cold, it's freezing. Yeah, because he's been in here. How cold is it? Look at the clock. Remember all the clocks that have been going? Yeah. Was that clock going earlier on? No. 
No. So no. why is that gone? Yeah. That's bizarre. What was that? Yeah, that behind you. Yeah. You step back, Craig. It's just the back of the door. What was it? I didn't hear it. Was it was the door. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Mm. It's so cold in here. Mm. It's freezing. Can you move rooms, Richard? Don't come into this room. What's someone, what are you turning around for? I don't know. I just sense there was somebody else here. This is going to crack open, this here. Okay, I'm going to close the door and... Do me a favour. What? Come out of the bedroom now, please. Why? Why? I just... There's just a threatening thing here. Come on, get down okay. here. Just, no, get come down. Just I'm coming come down. down, I'm coming down, I'm coming down. down. What do you mean threatening? Like, you know? When that door was fully opened, yeah. a gush went like that, hit me in the face, across my chest, and it felt threatening. Leave this up here alone, because... Did you see that, then? Yeah. What? 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 Yeah. So Light something and... yeah. flashed at yeah. the end. I saw that. Yes, I um, saw it as, as if well. someone had just gone with a torch and yeah. uh, lit up that area. Yes. Yeah. Come on, show yourself. Show yourself. Come on, just try once. We're almost out of tape. Just before we go and leave you forever, because we'll never come back here. <sighs> just, just do something to make it all worthwhile. Come on. Just prove to us, if you dare, that you exist. Please? Just give us a parting gesture. Come on. You're disappointed, Craig. Yeah, well, we're getting so close to something. I mm -hmm. just... We were. Yeah. We did venture back to the corridor with more tape, but unfortunately, whatever had been there had disappeared. Other investigations that took place during the night ran smoothly. Temperature changes were noted, along with strange noises. But the most intriguing evidence caught on tape were all these light anomalies. After many dust tests, we were interested to see all these different orbs. They were all caught in places that are known to have reported ghost sightings. During Phil's baseline tests, not one light anomaly was caught. So it does seem strange that during the early hours of the morning, these orbs showed up. Many people believe these light anomalies to be one of the first stages of a ghost manifestation. Until scientists can give us a definite answer, we will never be sure what they are. It, in my opinion, it's the closest I've come um, on these shoots to being very, very close to an entity. It was quite frightening up there. Without a doubt, this was an individual type of spirit that would categorise as being elemental. And these particular spirit entities have never actually come for a physical life to the Earth plane, nor had gained any sort of experience in a physical form. Overall, I was quite impressed with the investigation in general. Uh, we did a thorough investigation of the whole premises. The noises do seem to, to suggest, to me anyway, that there could be some kind of spiritual activity going on. Um, maybe not as much as 60 ghosts, but there is definitely something about this hotel. Well, the total psychic analysis of uh, the investigation in this inn was that there was a mixture. The mixture of great sadness, where we did find um, persons, the whole family was actually slain. So much, many layers of, you know, uh, residual energy. And overall, a fine investigation. I shall go away with fond, ghostly memories of the schooner. Electrical disturbances are actually fairly commonly reported when people report things like poltergeists. Um, and it may well have some kind of paranormal explanation, but personally, I would say a simple fault with electricity could be far more plausible. And what we need to look at is the possible, uh, any faults in the electricity supply to, the, to this particular hotel. Um, so could there have been a power cut during this time, which would explain lights going on and off and also clocks being reset. Um, and we have to rule out those possible explanations first before we can really be confident that something more unusual is happening. There's a hot spot here. Does that sound really silly? Is no, we get, get hot, hot and cold. Spots, yeah. The hotspot in room 28 appears unusual because normally you'd expect people to report cold spots when they're witnessing or experiencing um, ghostly phenomena. Um, so this is unusual because Yvette has first of all said that an area that feels particularly hot, but it doesn't necessarily require a paranormal explanation. It could be explained in terms of warm pipes or something else, so it requires an extra uh, leap of judgement to say there's something paranormal going on.
Don't come into this room. What's someone, what are you turning around for? I don't know, I just sense there was somebody else here. This is going to crack open, this here. When the group are having the seance at the top of the stairs, things then eventually start happening, and a, and a few unusual events. So, for example, they're hearing unusual noises, which have no, apparently have no normal explanation, and when they eventually go into the hotel room, it's very, very cold in there. So the whole group is very kind of excited, and a little bit frightened, thinking maybe there's something unusual happening. Now, I think it must be remembered that in that situation, I think anybody would probably be a little bit frightened and would start to interpret any normal noises, any normal events as being very unusual. Um, for example, even if I was there at that time in the morning in a supposedly haunted location, and even me being a so-called skeptic, even I would probably be a little bit frightened, simply because it's early in the morning and, and everyone's kind of gene each other along. So I, I think it's only to be expected. And it felt threatening. 60 ghosts? I don't think so. But one thing's for sure, there's definitely something strange going on at the Schooner Hotel. Until the next time, sleep tight. Scared beyond yeah. belief down there. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. You all right? Me.